We talk a lot about using ARP fasteners on the cars we build in the V8 Speed and Resto Shop and on V8 TV. And truthfully, most of those are street-driven cars that are maybe beat up on the weekends. But here at the SEMA show, ARP brings out engines that are the real deal, like this C7R Corvette Le Mans motor and this boosted Ford EcoBoost four-cylinder race motor. And these are all built with ARP hardware because ARP knows how to keep this stuff together. And it's always fun to see this kind of stuff in person at SEMA, but I think the coolest thing in the booth this year is an awesome Studebaker built by Alan Johnson Hot Rods. I think as uh, hot rod enthusiasts, we all have some cars in the back of our mind that someday we'd like to build. And Alan Johnson and his team at Johnson Hot Rods just did a wonderful version of something that I've always wanted. And it's one of these super aerodynamic and slick Studebakers. Alan, tell me about the car. Uh, this is a car we've done for Paul and Betty Gillum. We did a race car for them a couple of years ago. This car was actually started before the race car. So this one was picked back up about a year, a little over a year ago, and just getting it wrapped up. So, so this is a 53, four, what year is it? 53. 53. Uh, and this started off as a champion? Champion, 53 champion. And originally, was this a V8 car? Uh, I believe it was. It was a V8 car. And it sure is now. Oh, absolutely, with that <laughs> Keith Dorton big block in it. <laughs> the first thing I noticed, you know, besides the, the perfectly beautiful black paint, is the stance and the attitude that this car has. Uh, <coughs> tell me about the suspension. Uh, we, we built the chassis for the car. We're using a Morrison front cross member C6 spindles and control arms. Uh, we used a Ride Tech truck arm set up in the rear, like a 62 to 68 to 72 pickup mm -hmm. truck arm. And I mean, we've used that before on big cars and it works real good. Um, Ride Tech's coilovers, nine inch rear. Um, we've got fast fuel injection controlling the Hilburns on the big block, uh, Bowler 4L80 E-Trans. You know, it's, it's something Paul's gonna drive and use. I mean, the race car's the only car he's ever had on a trailer, so. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and uh, what'd you guys do inside the car? You know, it's a stock seat. We basically just, you know, move things around to, to get more room in it and, and fit him with how he needed to. We made a lot of trim pieces for the car. I mean, all the, the stock fit and finish on the Studebaker wouldn't, terrible gaps, you know. So we've, we've made all the trim pieces for this car other than the windshield and back glass. That's about the only stock trim pieces left on the car. So with, the, with the front and back glass moldings actually going into the rubber channel to yep. set, you know, that was pretty much something we couldn't, we couldn't fabricate anyway. Right. So. right, very cool. So outside of, you know, basically remaking the whole car, there's different challenges when building a Studebaker like this. I mean, that's probably the most difficult car I've ever built. I mean, just really? because of how fit, I mean, there's the structures, there's no structure on the cars, and then there's nothing, no fit. There's, there's no good starting point to to have something to fit. I mean, you're, when you're making everything fit together, that was a, that was the hardest part on this car. Yeah, and you really can't buy anything for it. No, I mean, you know, windshield molded rubber and, you know, a few rubber pieces is about it. I mean, Wow. Anything else, you better have a parts car, or have everything you need. Or be able to make it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about the uh, wheel tire and brake situation? Uh, we've got one off Evod wheels on the car that we had uh, wanted to do a, something that looked like a cast wheel. So with everything being nickel, we blasted the centers and had John Wright, you know, bright nickel the, the hoops and the centers. But with the centers being blasted, it gave it that little contrast. So. Yeah, I mean, it almost looks like a magnesium wheel. Right, well, that was the, yeah. that was intense. Perfect, <laughs> yeah, excellent. And uh, other body modifications, I mean, these things are pretty swoopy to start with, but it looks like you move bumpers around and change a few things. Yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff, I mean, you know, on the race car, the rear of these cars really taper a lot, so the quarters have been actually widened about two inches per side on this car to, to make the wheel and tire fitment right, right because right. everything's on a harsh sure. angle on the quarters on these cars. Uh, wheel wells have been moved up, up in the rear, down in the front. Um, we've made the bumpers front and rear, lower valences front and rear. Um, machine the grill bezels, the grill bars. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of other list. stuff that I'm not thinking of right now. Yeah, right. So this is intended to be driven, but it's very, very fresh. 
Has it been moved around yet? Do we know uh, how this thing drives yet? Well, I mean, not not a lot. We just yeah. finished the car up last Friday. I mean, we, yeah. engine was dynoed, so I mean, we know everything's good there. Uh, I might have put four miles on the car last Friday before it got loaded up to come out here. So. But no, it will get driven. I mean, Paul's not a he's not a trailer guy. So. Yeah, yeah. And the engine dyno was that a break-in, or did you guys actually go for a number? Uh, I think Keith made about 645 <laughs> on pump gas. But that's nice. what we've got. So. Nice. Well, the car looks awesome, and the modifications, I think, are done in the right direction. Thank uh, you. Because this was such a great-looking car to start with, it wouldn't take much to ruin one. No, I mean, they had to stay true to what the car was. I mean, yeah. make improvements, not go the opposite direction. Well, you guys did a fantastic job again. Congratulations. I love it. Thank you, Kim. No problem. Thank you.